You know, since we did some content on the drug slash potential supplement, Methylene Blue, we've probably gotten at least hundreds, if not over a thousand questions, comments, feedback about, tell us more about Methylene Blue. So here we go with some of those questions answered. In this section, what I want to talk about is the relationship of the potential use of the oldest synthetic drug that we believe has been around called Methylene Blue and potentials for cancer treatment. And then we'll do some other content getting into maybe some of the mechanisms behind why these things would be helpful. So if you're not familiar with methylene blue, it's a dye, but it's also a drug. Now the type of methylene blue is different based on the purity. So the kind for the drug is the more pure, kind to use as a dye is less pure. That should probably make sense. And we have tons of methylene blue content about all that business. I'm not going to talk about any of that. But what would be, as I say, the 10 or maybe 50,000 foot view of cancer research around the use of methylene blue as a support drug or supplement or agent for a cancer patient going through the process of cancer. So the first thing, and these don't really go in any particular order, but one of the things that we're always trying to do in the world of cancer treatment, prevention, et cetera, is to increase a process called apoptosis. Some people call it apoptosis, either way, whatever you want. But apoptosis is essentially a drive for a cell that has turned on a signal saying something's abnormal to essentially stop being alive. It's sort of a self-cleaning system, apoptosis or apoptosis. Methylene blue helps by triggering precursor activations of apoptotic effect. The next thing is it is a well-known, this is what we normally talk about it for, is a mitochondrial primer where it goes in and it goes around the normal steps that the mitochondrial energy generation goes in and goes into the side and kind of just jacks up the energy of the mitochondria. Now, in a non-cancer patient, that's going to help with their energy, et cetera. In a cancer patient, anything you do that goes in and supports mitochondrial function has the ability to have two different effects, one on normal cells and one on cancer cells. And in things I've talked about elsewhere in some of my cancer research I did, et cetera, in approaches to cancer that are mitochondrial, if I can make your normal cells function more normally at the mitochondrial level, that usually that same intervention will make the cancer cell mitochondria function abnormally, and that increases their sensitivity to other treatments and stuff like that. So mitochondrial cancer treatments, another place where methylene blue might be used. Another area which is related to this mitochondrial difference is methylene blue is a metabolic cancer treatment primer as well. So when we're thinking about the treatment of cancer, we often hear about metabolic treatments for cancer and metabolic treatments for cancer being maybe dietary changes that go on, restricting sugar and all the other metabolic type cancer therapies. Or we might use exogenous therapies in metabolism like ketones and other stuff like that. Or maybe many other metabolic cancer treatments, which could be off-label drugs or all sorts of stuff. Well, it turns out that some of the metabolic demands that we need outside the mitochondria in the cancer cell are going to be triggered and helped by methylene blue. So again, when we do the more microscopic view. We'll get more into that, talk about it and all that. But right now, just knowing that it's also a metabolic treatment support, very, very useful. And then the other area, and there's many areas, but another area that I was originally looking for something else and I came upon research on methylene blue for is one of the things we deal with in people who have survived cancer, they've had a lot of cancer treatment. And sometimes your more sensitive tissues, you get chemotherapy, especially they get DNA disruption because a lot of can't, chemotherapies are there to disrupt DNA or something up or downstream. And if that's cancer, that's great. If that's your kidney cells, that's not so great. So what we're thinking with this and what the research is showing, and again, we'll do a micro view of this in another video, is that the methylene blue is showing direct 
direct triggering of processes that can help repair DNA damage in your normal cells. And so this is critically important to people who we are working with who are trying to recover after chemotherapy, radiation, et cetera, and trying to get their best life back and their best quality of life back. Now, there's a number of other things that Methylene Blue has researched for, but these are the big ones. And again, this is the 10 or 50,000 foot view. And then we're going to go and we're going to do more of a micro view in a longer video. So if you're interested in that, that one's coming too. But just to go back and recap the big high points, it's the oldest synthetic drug that we have available. It is very commonly used in non-cancer for energy, et cetera, mitochondrial support. And Cancer research is showing us that it can help with the cleanup process called apoptosis. It can help us as a mitochondrial cancer therapy. It can help us as a metabolic cancer therapy. And it can help us in recovering our broken DNA from other cancer therapies. So all in all, there's a lot of promise, a lot of excitement around methylene blue for the use in people either with active cancer or recovering from cancer cancer. And I, for one, am very excited in watching all of this research and incorporating it into cancer therapies as we move forward. All right. Hope that answers the questions. We'll do a deeper dive on this topic coming up. We're going to put some other videos up here for you to listen to. And I want to thank you, everybody who are subscribers. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing, like, share, do all the things. I will see you guys on the next video.